the moment we start competing on a commission level is the moment we start losing. This is why you see the media attacking the commission because that's all they see the majority of agents as commission greedy salespeople versus somebody who sells something completely different. And I think that's where you and I come in and say, this is a big opportunity. read you a, a quick little story Do which it. I think you might you might enjoy buddy and I don't know if you know this story by the way everyone welcome we've got Curtis with Red X today we're going to be talking about social media going deeper getting business through social through providing value through just standing out and I, I think this is going to be more of a trend and you're going to start seeing people start doing a lot of the old school stuff in new ways and less of what we were hearing a lot of Zillow, Realtor.com, um, even in some cases, Facebook leads. So uh, I want to start off first by introducing Curtis. Curtis, for those people that don't know you, what do you do? Where are you at? So I am the president of Red X, been in the industry for almost two decades. Um, and uh, and we've been around for yeah 21 years. Red X has been around, and and I came in early, and we've been helping agents get listings and build business ever since. All right, I like that. And you have a marketing background. I do. Yeah, yeah. Sales about- marketing. I I mean, I cut my teeth back right out of high school. I did door to door sales. Mm. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. why we get along. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in California, I was selling Clark Pest Control. I don't know they have that down south. They do. That's who yeah. actually does my my house. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Come. I did, went door to door, and you know, you got bugs. We could take no. care of them, and yeah. I didn't even know that, dude. Yeah. I sold door to door. I sold windows. There you go. That's that's a bigger sale than a than a pest control contract. It was. It was. I'll tell you a quick story, and then I'll tell you another story. All right. All right. Ready. Uh, all has to do, by the way, everyone with listings, getting listings, connecting with people, driving value, because that's what we want. Um, I was on the phone selling windows. Uh, I was in my, I must have been in high school, summer, selling windows. And I decided to have a little bit of fun. I, for some reason, I didn't know that the calls were being recorded. And I'm a teenager. So I turned on my Scottish accent. And because I was watching DuckTales and I love Uncle Scrooge. And we're about the same age, so you know DuckTales. Oh yeah. And and um the lady was Scottish. So I turned on my Scottish accent and I started talking to her. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good at this, right? It was an amazing conversation. She didn't buy anything, uh, but she loved it. I hung up and then I get um the manager calling me into the room and saying, Hey, uh, we need to talk to you. And I was like, oh shit. I might be in trouble. I might be fired. Right. <laughs> and so I go in and they're like, Hey, um, that was a really interesting call that we just listened to. Would you want to go door to door and sell windows? And I was like, Oh, a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that was that uh, connecting with people. Let me read to you a story from a book called All Marketers Are Liars. Oh, yeah. If, uh, for those of you who don't know Seth Godin, it's from Seth Godin. Read it with me. Um, I highlighted it in red, almost all of it. There it is. It says, Arthur Riolo is a world-class storyteller. Arthur sells real estate in my little town north of New York City. Seth lives in New York City. Uh, he sells a lot of real estate, more than all his competitors combined. That's because Arthur doesn't sell anything. And I love that piece. It says, anyone can tell you the specs of a house or talk to you about the taxes, but he doesn't. Instead, Arthur does something very different. He takes you and your spouse for a drive. You drive up and down the hills of a neighborhood and he points out house after house, houses that aren't for sale. He tells you who lives in that house and what they do and how They found the house and the name of their dog and what their kids are up to and how much they paid. He tells you a story 
about the different issues in town. The long simmering rivalries between neighborhoods and evolution and eminent demise of the Mother's Club. Then, and only then, does Arthur show you a house. It might be because of Arthur's antique pickup truck, or the fact that everyone in town knows him, or the obvious pleasure he gets from the community. But sooner or later, you'll buy a house from Arthur, and not just because it's a good house, because it's a good story. That just lays the groundwork of the world we should be living in because the moment we start competing <clears throat> on a commission level is the moment we start losing. This is why you see the media attacking the commission because that's all they see the majority of agents as commission greedy salespeople versus somebody who sells something completely different. And I think that's where you and I come in and say, this is a big opportunity. It's huge. So yeah. Where would we start if we want to lay the groundwork to connect with people like Arthur? I, I want to be right. Arthur, dude. Right. 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 Well, I, so there's a, there's, there's a few things there. I mean, I mean, um, yeah, l let me just unload a few thoughts. The first is, is that despite the generations and people saying, oh, the new generation, they only, they only are on so social media and you got to DM them and Snapchat to communicate with these Xennials and, and, and uh, alphas. And, you know, it's despite all of the technology, it's actually proving more that when there's a highly emotional, you know, when, when, when there's a high, highly emotional experience that people want human interaction. They, 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 they want someone to take them by the hand and they want them to guide them through the highly emotional experience. And, and that, despite all the technology, that's more so like that, that's way more so with a millennial or Gen Z than it is with Gen Xers, right? Who we, you know, we, we just want to figure out our own problems, but, but people need that human connection and they, and they want that. And so when, when, when Arthur is telling a story, he's connecting with them throughout an emotional experience, buying your house, what will be the greatest asset of most people's life. Buying or selling of that is a highly emotional experience. And, and what, what Arthur's doing is connecting with them on a level that allows them to feel safe and secure and, and, and walk through that journey with him. And I think that's the core of good marketing um, um, is understanding that is, is that at, at the core of the, of, of the buying or selling of the property is, is a relationship where somebody feels like, like I'm being guided through this emotional experience. Um, so that, that was the first thought. The other thing is, <clears throat> you know, Arthur still had to have a way to, to, to meet that person, to take them on a drive. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what happens when, when I've made connection, but, but we have to start higher up on the, on the sales funnel a little bit and go, well, sure. how, how do I, how do I connect with a whole bunch of people that I don't know? And make meaningful connections so that I'm the guy that can guide them through this emotional experience. And, and that goes back to you, you have to talk to a bunch of people you don't know so that you can get to know them, mm. which, which may be the highlight of, of, of maybe real estate. If somebody said, what is real estate? Like, how do I build a business? You talk to a bunch of people you don't know so that you can get to know them so that you can better serve them in, in the buying or selling of their home. It used to be, hold on, because you're right. It used to be like you and I door to door, you and I making phone calls, which I think still works really well. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think there's another opportunity here. And that's that's in using social media in the sense of what you're saying. We're like, hey, you can actually talk to a lot of people. It still feels like a one to one basis from them because, Curtis, you're not watching my videos with a whole bunch of people in the same room and say, Hey, look at this Tristan guy. It's like, you're just watching it one-on-one -on -one and, and right. you're like, Oh, he's right. And you're talking to yourself. You're like, Oh, that, that was stupid. Oh, that was good. Right. Whatever you say, but now it's a one-on-one. -on -one, and if I'm doing a great enough job there, I'm attracting you 
And now I'm providing value. And you're saying, I need to call up Tristan, message him. Uh, dude, I'm watching this happen now. And you're right. Um, I'm more along the lines of where Arthur is, but we need to get there. It's like, how do we get there? Right. How do we start to get yeah. there? Because it's just the videos I've been posting. I have people that are contracted with other agents reaching out to me. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Right. I don't even want to get in trouble. Um, talk to your agent. Right. 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 And and when I did that the last few times, because this whole thing is blowing up on social, uh, I had the agents reach out to me and thank me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, good. But opportunities right. based on who you're trying to attract. Right. Where do we start with? Yeah. Where so, do we start with this if we want to grow well, with people? Well, I mean, that's probably the same answer as people. Uh, I get all the time when when the topic is social media, they're like Red X, like the lead company, Red, Red X, like the data company. And uh, yeah, it turns out the, the best way to start even on social media is is with with a niche, with people who are likely to sell. So, so let's take a distressed property, for example, for somebody, somebody in foreclosure, they're behind on their payments. Um, and, and then you get all of those people in your entire marketplace. Well, if you have social media allows you to have those, those individual conversations with all of them at the same time. So it turns out that, that targeting expireds and fizzbos and distressed properties and neighborhoods on social media is, is the place where you start. You want to build a brand and reputation. You want to get in front of the people that are experiencing an emotional experience right now. And you want to speak to them about that emotional experience. The reason why, I mean, to, like, I don't want to get into the NAR settlement right now because we don't have two hours to do a, a webinar. But like, how viral are your are your NAR settlement videos going right now? I've had I've had a few hit hundred, hundreds of thousands. Um, yeah. I I've had a few on YouTube uh, go over 10,000, but the comments are crazy. Yeah, crazy engagement. Crazy uh, yeah, and it, Instagram too. Well, and this is exactly the point, is you are now communicating with people in a highly emotional situation, right? There's uncertainty. They want to know what it means. They want to know why this and why that, and what do I do with my business, and where do I go from here? It's a highly emotional experience. And so when you make a video and you put it in front of them, they're engaging, they're connecting with that because they're experiencing that problem. What's this? It's a, just take that principle and apply it to your real estate business. If if a distressed property homeowner, that's a highly emotional experience. Yeah. I, I'm looking at, at losing my home or, or 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 an expired listing. Let's look at expired listing. I just tried to sell for maybe six months. I told my whole neighborhood, I told my church congregation and, and the PTA that I, we're moving and we're already saying goodbye. And then the home doesn't sell. And now I'm embarrassed. I'm frustrated. I'm blaming an agent. I'm, I'm, I'm in this highly emotional experience. So when you can have a message on social media, that's that, that very real, you, you, you grab your phone and go, Hey, let me tell you the three reasons why homes are not selling in today's market. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you could talk about price and you could talk about, you know, whatever, whatever you're going to talk about. But all of a sudden, a, an expired homeowner that's mm -hmm. scrolling through social media is going to see that video and it's going to connect directly with the emotional experience that they're having. And mm -hmm. that is how you create that inbound marketing opportunity um, to do that. Now, we I, I mean, even in our we, we've done webinars before, Tristan, where we talked about the reticular activating system. Mm -hmm. and, and the amount of noise, the reason why this is so powerful versus um, just starting to make videos, you, you need to make videos and post on social media no matter what. But the reason why targeting specific demographics or I, I would even say targeting specific problems that people are dealing with is so effective is because there's so much noise on social media that my brain is ignoring everything. It's ignoring almost everything that isn't very relevant to me right now. And experts right now are saying 30 to 50 impressions before you start to, 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 to buy any mind share in somebody's mind. Used to be, oh, seven to 12 touches, you can convert a sale. They're saying 30 to 50 times you got to have your brand in front of people over and over and over again before they would even start to recognize it. However, 
as soon as it's very relevant to the emotional experience that I'm having right now, I'm going to pay attention. Yeah. And that's even, even our newsletter had the word settlement in the subject line. Mm -hmm. We we had four times the click rate in our last weekly <laughs> newsletter. People are looking for solutions. And then we do any other time, right? Because it's a highly emotional experience um, that, mm -hmm. that people are experiencing in our industry. So do that with expireds. Do that with bizbos. You know um, what? You bring up a good point, man. Um, because if I'm if I'm targeting, so everyone here, think of let's just think of seller uh, attracting the seller right now, just for this, attracting the seller to get listings, the right. homeowner. If we're looking at that, what are what is a homeowner who's now on average in the United States living in a home almost eleven years in Los Angeles? It's 18 years, which is crazy now. 18, right? Affordability is a problem, obviously. But 11 years, almost 11, is the national average. If we know that, and we're thinking, well, how do we want to attract homeowners? What do we look for? There, There's two categories, Curtis, now that you brought up, what problems are we solving? Because I love yeah. that question. Yeah, yeah. One is what I like to call MRI, and that's, maintenance repairs and improvements that's one everyone who owns a home can tell you oh crap i didn't know how much stuff breaks in my house or how bored i get and i want to improve on something right that so maintenance repairs and improvement the other side are life moments births deaths and everything else in between right? And if we start talking to homeowners along those lines and layer in what Google came up with, I don't know when they came up with this, but when I visited their headquarters, um, this is what they presented to us years back. Must have been like 2015 or 16. Yeah. Um, they're called micro moments. Um, and it's called uh, I'll, I'll, uh, basics of micro moments. Let me grab the link and dump it in here for everybody yeah. watching. Yeah. Um, in everyone. All right, there it is. You can follow along with me and I'm going to scroll down. The basics of micro moments are right here. It says there are four game changing moments that really matter. And these, this is how you're supposed to think to get clarity on how to attract your audience. The I want to know moments when someone is exploring or researching, but is not necessarily in purchase mode. Right. And I want to know is where really right here is where we can attract the most people because they're thinking if you're like me curtis well i didn't know how to so i just moved into my house for the first time years back and I, my pilot for my water heater went out and i'm scared that i was scared to death about my pilot going out i was like if i turn it on is this thing gonna blow because I've, I've heard people say things like that <laughs> yeah. i had no idea so what I did is I went to Google and then Google <laughs> sent me to a video, right? And then I was like, oh, got it. Turn off everything. Yeah. I and then I went through that thing. That was a micro moment. And if we start thinking about solutions to homeowners and being that solution while they're living in the home, we start connecting with them at a completely different level. Some of my best videos, Curtis, are talking about possible problems now that you bought the home and live in it, and now that you're in the process of buying one. Uh, first one that comes to mind is you bought a home, you need a trust, and then I explain it. Yeah. Right. And that has nothing to do with me as a real estate agent. I'm just telling you what you need. And I had people going, how do we hire you to buy a trust, get a trust? Can you explain? I'm like, I don't know. Just let me let me send you who you need to go to. Right. So um Bill Bill saying, LOL, I thought you arrived and had a private pilot for your airplane. Ha! Bill, that's funny. No, that that's actually Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, uh. So I'm thinking Curtis and everyone else, I'm thinking micro moments. What are right. those micro moments? Right. What are those micro moments? Yeah, micro. Well, and I think just to clarify for for the audience, um, there's there's when you're when you're thinking of social media there's 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 really two categories you got to think in and one is 
maintenance, brand, reputation, long-term relationships, um, you know, long-term attraction marketing, right? Which is what you're talking about. It's, 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 I'm, I'm your guide through the, throughout the entire emotional experience of home ownership and all of those micro moments and all of those problems and emotional experiences that you have throughout there. And, and, you know, all of those are going to bring attention to you with this expertise of home ownership, which I think is, is really a theme that we need to, to, really own in our industry and we don't right now we own the purchase right um and and but beyond the purchase is is really this home ownership and and if you could build a brand or reputation but the other side of that is what about those people that are like that's great but i need some listings right now like like i need commission um in january i hope that things are better i know home sales are up like six percent right now you know this year but in January, there was an article that said 49% of licensed real estate agents do, are, are reporting that they don't have enough money to pay their mortgage or their rent. So in an industry where people are going, okay, but I could, you know, I yes, you need to main you need to make videos to maintain, you need to make videos about home ownership, and you need to you know, get out there and start building a brand. Otherwise, otherwise you're gonna get a listing and then you don't have any sustainability or predictability. But you also have to, you also have to go, well, how do you get business now? And, and, and I think that's where my entire business lives. You know, Red X lives on that highly emotional uh, experience right before point of sale of a home for sale mm -hmm. by owners are, are, are dealing with a lot of emotional experiences around selling their home. NAR does a study every year with for sale by owners. They publish it every year. Here are the top 13 to 15 things that for sale by owners say are the hardest thing about trying to sell their home on their own. Mm -hmm. Like we already just Google that. It's like the field guide statistics and, and NAR will pull that up. And, and, you know, one of them is letting strangers into your home. Well, if that's an emotional experience, make a video about that, target that video, boost that video to every for sale by owner in your marketplace. Mm. right that's emotional expired well, dealing go ahead take me through take me through a process okay this way people okay. can understand this and i'm going to be very specific because I, i've been talking about this to our coaching organization i'm going to share my screen with you uh, this is what we've been hearing over the last few years about the silver tsunami yep right so this is a graphic from my friend lance lambert <laughs> Uh, he started a company called Resi Club. He has a lot of data. Uh, the cumulative change in the number of baby boomers in the U.S., right? Here's the estimate according to Freddie Mac. Over the next uh, 11 years or so, 9.2 million fewer boomers homeowners households by 2035. Look at look at the possibility of the amount of homes are there going to be transferred in some way, Yeah. right? And so let's say... Going, going between just this, okay? Let's say I want to attract baby boomers. That's going to be my main focus. So now I'm thinking, I found my audience. Okay. Now I'm going to go through and say, well, what are the... I'm going to chat GPT or Gemini. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey, this age group, what are their problems as homeowners? Give me 20 things. Now I identify them. And now I can do two things. And this is why I, we use Red X, right? This is why we can do both. We can now decide who those people are and where they live and reach out to them, right? Yeah. A little bit of the old school. Yep. And if I reach them and I, I see that, oh, there might be something good, then I'll send them an, a handwritten note, connect with them, old school, old school, more old school. And then I'm like, well, I also want to attract in a different way, which is what you talked about. How then can I create answers to these 20 plus questions or problems, shoot it in a video, and then retarget to the specific audience? Because I know that in the next 10 years, this is going to happen. Right. And I want to be, I want to start now yep. so that two, three, four, five years, I'm attracting on top of having to chase. I want to do both. Yep. How do we do this? So um, 
All right, let me just take you through Red X a little bit uh, because because we we have the now business and we have the long term business. So what you're talking about is is our GeoLeads product, which we can pull up and and identify um, the the name, phone number, and email of every rooftop in your marketplace. Uh, the homeowner, not the person who lives there. We can find the homeowner of those properties. Okay. Um, and and then we have all kinds of information around there, demographic information and and some of the other things. So so you can you can go in there and say, okay, well let me let me pick an age demographic that I want to target. So you pull in your neighborhood, you know, neighborhood or your entire market, and then you say, okay, well here are the people that are of a certain age. Here are uh, people of a certain. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff. If if you want to narrow it even more, it's if income and equity position in their home and all kinds of stuff. But once you filter that down, you have an audience of people that you can do the old school with. You could, you know, send them mailers or or call them on the phone or go knock their door. But you can also hit a button and it uploads those directly into Facebook and Instagram. And and then Facebook and Instagram will go and find the users that match the data and say, and this isn't lookalike. We know we can't do lookalike. This is actually targeting the people that are in our system that finds them on Facebook and then those 20 videos that you have, you can you can start posting those videos as content on your feed and boost those videos specifically to the target audience that you're going after, that you want to see it. And boosting is really fantastic, especially if you're only going for impressions and exposure and you just want them to see all this stuff is, is very inexpensive. I mean, $3 a day can put you in front of a thousand people um, a thousand new people every single month, probably several times they'll see your stuff. So, um, you know, and pretty soon they're going to be like, oh, that's interesting. They're going to start liking you. They're going to start following you and you start to build this influence. And and that's how you build a brand and reputation. So that's the geo leads. Um, but, but this is the same process for all the target audiences. It's expired listings. Like if, if, if you don't want to call an expired listing, then at least upload it to Facebook with all of the other expireds and talk to them about the emotional experience that they're having. Same with uh, vacant rentals. Our for, for rent by owners are, are, are mm -hmm. landlords mm -hmm. trying to fill a tenancy. And I can tell you from owning rentals that the most frustrating time is when they are vacant because they're just costing me money. Yeah. And, and if somebody were to contact me in that emotional experience, with the video, if I was scrolling right now, I have two vacant properties in Alabama right now. And if I was scrolling Facebook and some agent, because they had geo leads in, in Alabama, knew that I was a homeowner and I saw a video that was like, hey, home ownership is up in this in, in our state. Some of these neighborhoods are transitioning from investment to home ownership. And now is the time to get the listed and sold. I would call that guy, I would call that person in a second. And go great because I've had one vacant for sixty days, mm, mm. you know. So so it's a high. Even the fact that I went on that rant can show you it's an emotional experience, and and if you are speaking to me about those problems, so it's the foreclosures, it's the neighborhoods, and and like you're saying, the neighborhood and the silver tsunami. You can use data to target the specific audience with the emotional experience that they're having or anticipating having as, as you know, through social media. I agree with you, man. And I think we layer answering those, like you said, answering those future questions in those micro moments. Yes. And then we layer in the idea of what it looks like to live there because we've been living here for a long time. I can go and say, hey, I go there, I go here. And I think once you layer everything together, um, that's a really good plan to to start attracting business. So I, I like that. And well, I think, and I think that. I, I was just going to add that, that, you know, this doesn't need to replace what you're already doing. It actually is kind of the raises the tide of all of your other marketing efforts, right? Because, yeah. because they're seeing you in their newsfeed a bunch. So then when they see your other advertising, whether it's a billboard or a radio ad or a phone call or a flyer on their door, or they meet you at some community event, they're, 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 it's, a, it's a warm introduction because they already know who you are. Yeah. And when you layer in the organic piece too, right, with the right hashtags and the right um, 
geo geo points for yep. say Malibu, LA, or Ventura, or 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 Park City, wherever you want to go. I think that that works extremely well. I like this, man. All right, yep. so then if I'm shooting video, do I send it over to you? You edit, and then you upload it for me. Target whoever I want. What does this look like? Yeah, so our product will do will will kind of do everything you want it to. It's it's kind of piecemeal a little bit. Uh, the only thing we can't do is we can't build your brand because we're not you. So you so as long as you make the video because we want people to see your name and your face, then yeah, our team if you, through our app you can send it. We'll do all the editing and we'll do all the research um, on hashtags and everything that you're talking about. We'll do all of that research and even and manage the posting of that on on you know multiple platforms. So you know I usually tell people Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, are kind of the three main ones that 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 you want to be on for buying demographics, but um, mm -hmm. but we can even manage the posting of that for people. Uh, but but the key is it still starts with data. It starts with who's the audience that you really want to go after that that you have the best chance of of getting business now and building predictability, and that's never not going to be expireds. People can clown on working expireds because they don't want to prospect on the phone. Fine. But there's still people that have a 80% relist rate and half of them are going to be with the new agent. So you, you should be marketing to expired somehow. And, and we're helping to facilitate that through direct mail and through social media. So yeah, our tool, we, we, we can help you record the video. Our app has a teleprompter. It has all the AI. So if you are not knowing what to say, you can just type in a question, just like we were talking about. Um, you could say... Hey, this is the person I I really want to target. What what might they be dealing with right now? Or what questions might they have right now? And write me a script to answer that question. And it will write you a script. And then you have the teleprompter right on your phone that you can read it and record. And then you can keep that video and send it, or you could send that to our team to do all the editing. I like it, man. Thank you. I was actually just looking at uh, Red X on the geo point. I was <clears> trying <throat> to filter out. Um, Here's what I got. I uh, picked an area in Malibu, ownership time, 10 years, near 200. I'm just trying to see uh, what this would look like, right, as I get them. And uh, that's what I was doing while you were talking. Yeah. Well, like, and then and then you can pull those in and, you, and then the, you can continue to filter down. You can say, okay, now out of these people, how many people are 80 years old or older? You know, how many that, people, how true. many people have equity in the home? And you can start to narrow that down even more to say, you know, to really hone in on who do I want to boost my content to, not just to boost it, but because your message is highly relevant to the problem that they're dealing with. I would say that that's, that's where, that's where we start winning faster. Yes. Because the, the, the more narrow our messaging is to that specific audience, it feels like you're talking to me now. Yeah. Versus I'm talking to everyone in Malibu. Right. I don't think so. Um, Manny G has a question and I don't know the answer to this one. Curtis um, says, do you guys, are you guys available in Canada? We do. Yeah. All of the same social media. We don't have as much data points in Canada for neighborhood stuff and like expired listings are, are you're not allowed. There's privacy laws in Canada that prevent, you know, expired listings. Uh, but yes, we, you know, all of the social media and the videos, and we do have data and target audiences that you should be going after in Canada. Yeah. Yep. I like it. And then Bill Rapp says, uh, yes, now it activates their RAS, right? As we do all of this and yeah. they keep on, it's like, you know what, we're, we're telling you what to think, which I love. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that's probably the best thing yeah. ever. Um, Manny wants to know what data you do have for Canadians. Canadians uh, for sell by owners, vacant rentals are the primary audiences up there, but you can upload anything into the, the platform. So if you're getting data, uh, for example, your own sphere of influence, you should be uploading into our system, creating the custom audience with that on Facebook and Instagram and, and, and really boosting your, your organic content to your, to your own database. That's right? where I would start, man. I, yeah. We, yeah, definitely uploading your database and then retargeting a message to them consistently changing it 
And I think the biggest challenge for us as real estate agents is we shoot, we may shoot a video or two and that's it. And we don't know what to do with it. So um, we would send it over to you. You can just retarget whoever we yeah. want. In fact, Curtis, now I have to reach out to you after because I have a question for you <laughs> about that. Deal. Deal. <laughs> uh, I like that. Manny says he, I, I do do that very good. Bill, thank you for commenting. Anyone else has a question or an idea or something that you need clarity on? Let us know here. Uh, Curtis, last question for you, just so uh, we understand where you're at, what you're doing. What are you, what are you consuming right now? Uh, whether it's reading or yeah. podcast or watching, what does that yeah. look like? I do a lot of audiobooks. Um, I, you know, I have a 25 minute drive. So, so either way, that gives me an hour a day where I can listen to books. And, and, and I'm to the point now where I like a lot of the same genre business, self development, improvement, sales, marketing. Um, that, that, you know, you can, you can continually increase the speed that you listen to it at. You know, so, um, but the book right now that I'm that I'm listening to right now is a book called The Road Less Stupid. Oh, I love that book. That's and a and book. it's a fantastic business book. Really? It really gets into it. You know, we, I always say, oh, you know, I paid a lot of tuition on that experiment, you know, is <laughs> how I usually say it. But he just calls it a dumb tax and uh, is is and, and I'll just tell you what I've learned from it, you know, so far in the book, I think. I think the main takeaway for me so far is really sitting down one, having time to think and we don't ever schedule time to think we're so busy. Um, that makes us way, way too reactive in our businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. so time to think and time to think through things. And then he's really taught me through his framework of questions that you ask, what are the secondary consequences of your decisions? Like it's all, it's easy to see the primary, like, okay, well, if, if, if I go home and yell at my wife, I might know the immediate consequence, but the secondary consequence might be my kids witness that. Right. Um, and I don't know why I came up with that example. I don't really yell at my wife, you know, <laughs> I know you don't, boss, you're she's a boss in my own, you know, but, <laughs> but you know, those secondary consequences, and when we apply that to business, you go, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to launch this product or I'm going to make this feature, or I'm going to, I'm going to take this feature away or retire this product there. You, it's easy to see the primary consequences, but what are the secondary hmm. consequences? And then the question is, is, can you live with those if they're, if they're negative? Yeah. And if you can't, then you probably should say no to the, to the thing that you're thinking about. So that, that's a great book. Um, and, uh, book yeah i think i think right now this is maybe not the answer you're looking for but I, I am trying not to consume news and media uh is is become so extreme and so negative that 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 there's just nothing good that comes from it and and you you just have to be really careful where you're getting your information and the worst is is believing the headlines in in your newsfeed people are scrolling and they're making global assumptions based off some fear-mongering like look at what's happening in our industry when people are like commissions are destroyed the whole industry's disrupted and that's a headline and then you start reading you're like oh that that was just clickbait so so i'm oh. not consuming those things i do a lot of books um on um the brain i you know so Spark is the last book I read and it's, uh, has, yeah, good. yeah. Spark has to do with the uh, exercise and the effect it has on your brain and learning. So pretty fascinating. I, I want to read a book about how, when you eat donuts, it's great for your brain, but I can't find it. No, I can't find it. no. why don't you write that book and I'll, I'll write it forward in it. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to do is finally read a book that you haven't read. That, that's what that's my goal is to someday offer a book to you and you go oh wow I haven't read that one but in all the years I've known you that hasn't happened yet so oh uh, you know it was, it's just uh read hacking read I'm rereading this is marketing by Seth Godin yeah. and I can't believe how accurate it is to the world we were just introducing with the settlement so that is amazing pair that with what you're reading 
Yeah, that, dude, yeah. that's amazing. Well, well, what's interesting about Seth, go, I told my whole team here, we had a big meeting, kind of a strategic meeting on AI. How is it affecting our world? How is it affecting marketing? What is it doing to search engine optimization and all this stuff? And, and my conclusion was, Everybody should go back and reread as many Seth Godin books as you can, um, because he was kind of the, fa the the father of inbound permission based marketing, which yeah. is where the world is is like we've kind of digital marketing is coming kind of full circle of 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 yeah it's really about if they can observe you in a way that they connect they'll reach out to you yeah and that I mean that that's really what we're trying to do on social media. So. So I yeah, a lot of people should go back and read more Seth Godin. Yes. And guys, check out Red X. We put up the links there. Thank you so much, Curtis. It's always great talking to you, dude. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Appreciate you.